Assalamu alaikum friends today for of AFM division crash course and today we are going to cover financing decision so let us go through the topics that we are going to cover today today we are going to cover the past exam history what are the factors that we have to consider when we are raising finance these are some key questions that you need to ask before you raise finance before you choose the type of finance that you are choosing the VAC how to calculate VAC why the VAC increases why the VAC decreases how it can be adjusted we are going to cover that because calculation of VAC has an implication in a lot of areas for example your valuation of company after an accusation or a reconstruction of an investment appraisal VAC is very important principal theories some theories we are going to cover such as pecking order theories static trade of theory static trade of theory yes we were talking about this this is one of the theory we are going to cover this is relating to your VAC okay then we are going to cover the packing order theory when we have to raise finance in which order are we going to select the finance dark pool trading system what is dark pool trading system debt financing options what are your debt financing options there are so many ways through which you can raise your debt Islamic finance we are not going to cover in detail Islamic finance, just brief. Then we are going to cover the financial foreign projects. And what are the specific foreign financing options? This financing options are already specific for your foreign projects. It is not for your domestic projects. Okay. So let's start with the past exam history. If you see the discussion of financing option is very important. It has been asked in fact seven times. If you see June 2017 till March 2019, it has been asked seven times in question two and three and once in question one. That means it shows that this question comes mostly in a 25 marks question in your question number two or three, right? And this is a discussion. So you need to discuss more than the calculation. This is a discussion question. Okay. Then we have gearing calculations and discussions. This is also important. Of the VAC on your gearing. You have to calculate as well as discussion and it came twice as question number one and two and three usually VAC comes in question number one if you are given an investment appraisal or reconstruction and reorganization or acquisition and merger in question number one okay then we have m plus m morigaline and the minerals discussion in september 2017 we had in question number one so let's start with the Key considerations. What are the questions that you need to ask before raising finance? You can use this slide to answer your questions in your revision kit. Because this question has been asked repeatedly seven times over the past year. So let's start. The first one. Firm's optimal capital structure. Optimal capital structure means your equity and your debt. Right? We raise finance through equity as well as debt. That has to be balanced. You are not using too much of debt because your gearing will increase that means you will be having more financial risk now you are using too less debt because if you are using too less debt you cannot take the advantage of tax relief we know that debt has an interest so that interest is tax deductible it has a tax advantage right we have to pay that's why when we are having more debt in the equity uh, with the equity our cost of capital our VAC goes down but it has to be an optimal capital structure too much of debt is also not good because then the VAC keeps rising again so what is the firm's optimal capital structure that you have to answer question based on that you have to decide how much finance you have to raise through equity or through debt then we have the avail uh, availability of the sources of finance some sources of finance might not be available to you for example if you are if you are a small organization you will not have access to venture capital you will not have access to uh what do i say debate bond uh, sources to this available to this uh, kind of sources of finance so it depends looking at the type of organization you are if you're small you'll be having for example simple bank loans overdraft but if you are a large business you'll be having access to more sources of finance which are not available for small businesses then we have tax tax is very important when it comes to raising finance especially when it's debt it does not affect your equity but debt yes if you are taking debt if the company does not pay tax then the benefits of debt will be reduced if you are not paying tax then taking on more debt will not have any benefit for you 
Why are we taking more debt? To enjoy the benefit of tax, right? If we pay tax, because if we pay debt, sorry, if we are using debt, it reduces our tax payment. But if you are not paying tax at all, then what's the advantage of taking debt? Then you can go for equity instead. Risk profile. Directors may be more cautious than the investors. They might want to minimize the risk. Right? So they will be choosing a finance where the risk is less. It depends on the risk profile. If you are too risky, the bank will not give you the bank loan. You cannot take bond. Then you might have to go by the equity. So it depends. Then, covenant. The company's article of association may limit the debt capacity. That this is your debt capacity. More than this, you cannot exit. So it will put restrictions on you if you want to take more debt. If it is already crossing your debt capacity according to the articles of association. So these are the five considerations that you need to look upon when you are raising finance. Even in the exam also whenever they ask this question. How are they, uh, what are the considerations or what are the things they need, in, uh, they need to take into account before they raise finance. These are the five points you can write in your answer. Then back. What is back? Back is simply your cost of equity plus cost of debt. Because we know that we, organ we finance a business using both equity and debt. So back is the weighted average cost of capital. We add both cost of equity plus cost of debt. Okay. Back can be called such as back can be used as a, known as cost of capital or discount factor. Okay. Because this is the discount factor that we use to discount our investment projects to find the present value right to find the net present value we use the discount factor that is your VAC your VAC is the discount factor that you use it can be called as cost of capital or VAC or discount factor anything it's the same thing okay VAC and cost of capital and all then what is debt debt is cheaper than equity you must know this debt is cheaper than equity why because debt has interest and interest is tax deductible that makes debt cheaper than equity equity is not tax deductible and debt has lower risk than equity tax relief on interest these are the advantages of going for debt but there is a disadvantage what is it finance risk will increase finance risk increases the cost of equity and does back right if you are having in a pool you are having equity you are having a debt also if you are taking more debt a time will come where finance risk will increase that benefit of debt sorry that disadvantage of debt will be more than the benefit of debt and hence your cost of equity will increase start increasing and because of that back also will increase what is the principal theory let us go through this this is the diagram you don't have to memorize the diagram you don't have to draw the diagram in any exam just for your understanding purpose, how your cost of equity and cost of debt reacts and VAC, how VAC changes accordingly. Okay, K is the cost of equity, KD is the cost of debt and KO is the VAC. If you see X, X is the point that is known as optimal level of gearing. Optimal level of gearing means where your cost of capital is at the minimum, the lowest. Okay. So if you see your cost of capital is minimum at X. Because after that, your debt will increase. And so, your cost of equity will increase. Even your cost of capital starts increasing. That is the lowest. If you see your K0. See, K0 will come in between your cost of equity and cost of debt. Okay, Because cost of equity will always be the highest. And in that, we are using a cheaper debt. Cheaper cost of debt. Right? So, your cost of capital will be less than your cost of equity. But more than your cost of debt. Okay? It will be in between. That's why you can see that line in between. Cost of equity and cost of debt. That also will be falling, falling, falling. After some time again it will increase. So where your cost of capital is the lowest. That is known as optimal gearing. Okay. This is the traditional view. How they wear the gearing. How they view gearing. Okay. Next. We have some more theories. Morigelini and the Miller's theory. Okay. This is. With the tax, if you're having tax, this they were taking without the tax. This they are taking with the tax now in the debt. So if you see 
they take the tax in the debt if you see the cost of debt is a straight line now it's not increasing decreasing it's just one straight line that means no matter however much debt you increase your cost of debt will not change the only thing that will change is your cost of equity and cost of capital so cost of equity you see it's increasing but your vac is falling down vac is falling down that is k0 that's falling down because you are having the cost of debt which is not changing so as gearing increases this is the conclusions drawn from the diagram as gearing increases that means as as you are going towards the right vac decreases steadily you see k o is decreasing but the higher level of taxation the lower the combined cost of capital remember the more tax that you have to pay the lower will be your cost of capital why because cost of debt because that tax is deductible you are taking the benefit of tax in your cost of debt hence your cost of debt falls down if you are paying higher tax so combined cost of capital also will fall down higher the level of the company is gearing the greater the value of the company you see so based on that you can say higher the level of the company is gearing greater the value of the company why because as gearing increases your cost of capital is falling down if your cost of capital is falling down you are using a lower cost of capital to discount your cash flow hence your company value will be high how do we value the company we need a discount factor to discount our cash flows right so if we are discounting our cash flow by a lower cost of capital our cash flows will be higher and hence our company value will be high you should link the vac with the company value you should do able to do this okay then so according to theory company should choose 99.9% of gearing level because if by this theory if we say that cost of capital will keep decreasing only with higher gearing so according to that our debt should be 99.9% right we can reach up to that gearing 99.9% this is according to theory okay thus you don't have to understand understand the logic behind this how 99.9% why not 100% and all it's not needed just this is according to theory they are proving that if you go by this method then but there are other practical problems that will not allow the companies to take on high level of gearings like bankruptcy cost yes you cannot keep on just taking debt for example if you are taking bank loan bank loan how much can you take you will reach to a point where you cannot afford to pay back the interest and the amount of the loan bankruptcy cost will be there you might become bankrupt there's a bankruptcy cost so companies have to take this into factor as well when you are taking debt especially debt then agency cost is there what is agency cost what is agency cost for example if the company is is taking a high level of they are performing at the high level of gearing that means they have taken more debt right or the company might want to take more debt because they want to invest in a project the management want to go for that loan they want to take that debt why because they want to they want to finance an investment but shareholders might not like it because it's risky for the company so there is an agency issue between the shareholder and the manager of the company they want to take on more high level of gearing because they want to simply finance an investment but shareholders like no because they don't want to take that high level of risk financial risk so there is an agency cost also then tax exhaustion you cannot forever take the advantage of tax at time the benefit will be exhausted tax exhaustion so because of this also most companies might not want to go at high level of gearing then personal taxes you might have to pay some personal taxes as well which again allows the uh, which allow again this disout the companies from taking on high level of gearing signaling to investors this could be a signal to the investors if you are just keeping on taking gearing if your gearing is high okay in the market it is considered that you are very risky which is a negative signal to the investor it's not good so because of that also companies might not want to take on high level of debt hence high level of gearing now let us go to the static trade of theory 
all these theories and all in the exam you don't have to write or explain what the, this theory is like this this theory is like that or the difference or the comparison no the reason why you are ex and you have to learn this theory is for you to understand how the cost of capital cost of equity cost of debt reacts in a certain situation if you are having a high gearing how it reacts if you are having a low gearing how it reacts if you have a tax in that how it reacts only for that purpose so static trade off theory means trade off trade off means you have to balance the benefit versus the cost okay there's a trade off between the tax shield because of that tax shield it increases your firm's value and also the reduction in value that is caused by the cost of financial distress bankruptcy agency costs so it's benefit versus the cost on one side you are having the benefit because you are having a tax relief on the other side you are having the cost such as agency costs bankruptcy financial distress of taking more debt so what should you do in that firms have to assess this trade okay they have to see in order to find the optimal capital structure they have to see then so what is the conclusion that is reached this is the conclusion reached that the bankruptcy risks are incorporated into the mm's model mm means modigliani and the minner's model remember we took tax there tax was there incorporated already so if we take bankruptcy risk also in this model this will be the same position as the traditional model can we go back and check see this was the modigliani and the minner's right you keep on increasing the gearing cost of capital will fall down this was with tax but if you take without tax this one financial distress you see at one point cost of capital will increase with your cost of debt cost of debt will increase and cost of capital also will increase so it will reach to this traditional view only if you take your bankruptcy in this modigliani and the millers with tax it is the same as a traditional view that means after a certain point cost of capital will increase that means there's an optimal level of gearing that you can achieve that's what they are saying so what should you do firms in a stable static position they are in a stable position okay will alter their gearing to optimal you can change your gearing to an optimal level you can either reduce your debt levels or increase your debt level okay you will reduce the debt level if you are above the target ratio for example your target ratio was 50% your gearing should be 50% but now you are reaching 55% what will you do you will reduce your debt so that you reach up to 50% or below that because if you are reaching above 50% it will cause you financial distress agency costs this will exceed the benefit of debt but if you are below the target ratio then you have to increase your debt because then you can take the advantage of the tax relief on the debt okay so this is how you decide below the target ratio you increase the level of debt above the target ratio you decrease the debt level because then the cost will be more than the benefit after a point so come into the packing order theory this theory is very important even from an exams point of view because questions has been asked on this theory even though not directly but indirectly they have asked questions for example what is the order that you have to go by when you have to raise finance that time you have to use this theory so this theory says that you first have to go by the internally generated funds when you are raising finance you first have to see your retail and earnings whatever the funds you have internally in the organization that first you have to access that after you utilize it completely then the next one is debt because debt is less costlier than the equity because of tax relief so next is debt after that you are going for the equity the last resort has to be your equity new equity issue because the equity is expensive you have issue cost and all those things so this is the preferred order pecking order means there's an order for you to go before you take a financing decision first you are going to go by the debt and earnings then debt then equity Okay, sometimes you may not have to reach up to the equity. Your internally generated funds might be enough. If it's not enough, go to debt. If debt is also not enough, then you have to go to equity issue. But you have to remember this order. Okay, next. This has an implications for investment and gearing. Okay, if you are using the pecking order theory, this has implications on two things. One is investment, one is gearing. 
what is the implications on investment number one value of the project will change with the choice of finance how for example how do you calculate cost of capital you calculate cost of capital using cost of equity and cost of debt so if you are taking debt only okay let's say you have used internally generated funds and debt you have not used equity at all in your finance just debt so if you are using debt definitely your cost of capital will be lower hence your value of the project will be higher you see but if you are coming to the equity then your value of project will go down because cost of capital will increase so value of project will change according to the order that you are using your finance next choice of finance may impact on the decision to accept or reject a project yes the choice that you are taking through which you are going to raise your finance how you are going to raise your finance will will impact on the decision whether you are going to accept a project or reject a project how for example you have to you have an invest you have a project where you have to invest 1.5 million okay and you have in your internally generated funds you just had 500000 you used it and you are not able to get 1 million of debt why because your gearing ratio is above the target ratio so because you cannot uh, use your finance through debt what are you going to do you are simply going to reject the project you cannot take the project because you cannot finance it through debt then highly higher geared companies with less cash may under invest yes if you are already a higher geared companies let's say you are having a gearing ratio of 60% already and you have less cash also you are not going to invest you are definitely going to under under invest wherever you have to invest also you are not investing so this affects your investment decisions coming to the gearing how your packing order theory affects your gearing number 1 higher the cash flow the lower the resultant gearing if you are having a good amount of cash flow your cash flows are higher your gearing will be lower because you can use your cash cash is internally generated funds you can use to finance your or to invest so you don't have to take on more debt then so your gearing ratio will be lower second equity equity may be issued at a time of high information asymmetry high information asymmetry means managers know more than the owner of the company information is not symmetrical is asymmetry one party knows more than the other party at that time you have to use equity so it affects your gearing okay taking on more gearing will definitely lower your gear, lower your gearing ratio because in the information asymmetry it is more risky to take on debt or debt right because to take debt the bank should know the information they should have the access to same amount of information that you have so in the information asymmetry you cannot take on debt you have to take equity so that you can reduce the gearing now dark pool trading system what is dark pool trading system the only thing you have to know is what are the advantages and disadvantages and how it is different to ipo ipo is initial public offering you can share your trade through private public or another area is dark pool trading what is dark pool trading where you trade okay you trade in a listed stocks but this are unavailable to public this is not available to the public hence it is called dark pool like for ipo the public knows that you are going to issue shares it is available to the public the information is available to the public here it's not it's unavailable that's the difference next the rise in the popular uh, popularity of dark pool means that the information asymmetry becomes an issue of greater importance now correct in the dark pool trading because not the public does not have the access to the same information that you do information asymmetry increases so because of this this became of a greater importance information asymmetry in the dark pool trading debt financing options what are some debt financing options bank loan bond issue sometimes with one and then we have debenture issue convertible bond issue mezzanine finance syndicated loan and for further reading on this you can uh, read an on your accca website an article named as bond valuation and bond yield 
this will cover bond finance in more detail okay it's in there in your ACCA website so in your exam the most the finance option which comes mostly is one is bond the other one is convertible bond issue and the other one is mezzanine finance mezzanine finance comes at times mezzanine finance has a mixture of debt and equity characteristics of both equity and debt there okay if you want to have an understanding of it you can have uh, google it and read more on this coming to islamic finance in islamic finance you have to know some terms mostly in islamic finance you have to know the differences with the commercial finance okay one is murabaha that means trade credit the translation is given in the bracket in the english it is the meaning as trade credit how it is different from normally the trade credit and all then ijara ijara means lease finance sukuk sukuk is debt finance mudaraba equity finance musharaka is venture capital and in this also we have two articles on acca website which covers islamic finance so make sure that you go through the articles to understand islamic finance more in islamic finance you mostly have to know the difference between the commercial finance for example one example in islamic finance you cannot uh, use hedging in instruments like options swap future they are not allowed why because according it, it follows sharia law okay islamic fa follows sharia law so according to sharia you cannot be involved in instruments which involves uh, speculating okay because it is risky it is considered something very risky so you cannot be involved in a risky activity you cannot even hedge it's not allowed in islam so that's why we have this differences with commercial finance in commercial finance we can use all the hedging instruments for speculation but in islamic finance speculation is not allowed it's haram haram means it's not permitted at all another uh, difference is the risk when you're taking a risk on a loan for example you are giving a loan the risks and the profits are shared equally among the two parties okay and to know other differences you can go through the technical articles as well as you can google and find more information if you want to read more on it but definitely uh, your textbook is enough for this area islamic finance and calculation is not asked in this area it is only the discussion part that is asked on islamic finance now the last part of this is foreign finance uh, financing foreign projects as well as what are the options for foreign projects one is the key issue when it comes to foreign projects whether you have to borrow in domestic or foreign currency okay if you bo borrow in foreign currency what happens the advantage is that it will help you to hedge against any currency movement how for example if you are having an investment in the subsidiary already overseas subsidiary you are receiving cash flow from the subsidiary in their currency in foreign currency you are already having a cash inflow so having a borrowing also in that same currency will minimize your risk foreign currency risk because of the currency movement okay second this is called netting off okay you are netting you are, or it's called matching you are matching your payment with the receipt in the foreign currency so borrowing is a payment and you are receiving the cash received in a foreign currency from the project so you it balances out and hence your risk is minimized foreign currency borrowing can be serviced from cash flows arising from the foreign currency investment yes if you're having a foreign currency borrowing also you can pay that foreign currency for example you have taken a loan in foreign currency so you can pay that foreign currency loan in the foreign currency that you are receiving from the investment that you are having in the foreign country right so you don't have to convert anything there is no risk at all use that foreign currency uh, cash flow cash inflow to pay your foreign currency borrowing now what are the specific foreign financing options this are only specific for the foreign projects not for domestic options and we have short term and long term in short term it is euro currency short term syndicated credit facilities multiple option facilities euro notes these things are there in your textbook so make sure that you read this and have a brief understanding what it means you will not be asked a detailed question on this euro currency euro notes so you don't have to worry about it 
long term we have euro bond and syndicated loans okay so that's it for today tomorrow we'll be covering dividend decision in dividend decision we are going to cover the transfer price how the dividend policy will have an impact on the company valuation on the investment decision on the financing decision value of the company right dividend valuation model all those things we are going to cover in the tomorrow in the dividend decision so till then take care and thank you for watching